Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So ethics play a major role in pretty much everything in our lives, especially right down to business, right down to everything we do, We right down to social media. There is ethics involved in it. This gentleman has researched it, provided papers for it, authored different uh, documents for that, publications, and taught it for many years as a professor. And he's back with us. We're going to talk about some things that uh, will engage us, things that we're dealing right now. Ronald Berenbaum is back with us. Welcome back, uh, Ronald. How are you? Hi, Steve. I'm doing okay. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. And we're going to we're gonna focus with the lens of of ethics on three things that are trending right now. Um, which one do you want to start with? Well, let's do it chronologically. The first of these is the Gettysburg Address. Uh, this is President's Week for school children. Uh, Monday was President's Day, <coughs> day only for people like you and me, maybe not even you. Uh, and uh, so uh, that being the case, uh, there was a and there was also a poll of ranking our presidents in order as there is about every two years and as he as he has for the last several years several times Abraham Lincoln finished number one so there was a lot of uh, coverage about the Gettysburg address an unusual amount and more I noticed more than usual um uh, this, as you all know, or is is a very short piece. <clears throat> there are five versions of it, ranking from 272 to 276 words, uh, but they're all, you know, in terms of their actual meaning, uh, they're all, uh, and historical significance, they're all pretty much the same. The Gettysburg Address uh, was a result of an invitation extended to the president to uh, deliver a few appropriate remarks, that was the word used, appropriate, uh, at the dedication of the National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, in November of 1863. And... Uh, that was in commemoration of the Battle of Gettysburg, <clears throat> which had occurred earlier in the year, which I think was the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. And the Union won fairly convincingly, fairly decisively. And it looked as though the corner had uh, been uh, turned uh, in that uh, in that war. Uh, Lincoln's speech was, or appropriate remarks, that's all you could call them, uh, was delivered uh, after the uh, orator for the day, Edward Everett, famous orator of the day, had delivered a speech of two hours. Remember, I said Lincoln's uh, remarks were only more than, were no more than 275 words. After uh, Everett had concluded his remarks, uh, Lincoln rose to deliver a few appropriate remarks. Uh, I've seen pictures of it. You'll see them all over the internet uh, uh, trending uh, in the last week. Uh, actually, there's only one picture and there's a bunch of people moving around. And if you can find Lincoln in that picture, uh, your eyesight is uh, <laughs> better than mine. Uh, so it looked like everybody was about to take a, a break and the president started speaking. <clears throat> the first thing I would call your attention to is the first word, which is <clears throat> four score and seven years ago, or the first phrase, that meant 87 years, of course. And that meant that Lincoln was talking, and quite a significant distinction in many ways, that Lincoln was talking about the Declaration of Independence, not the Constitution, which was the 
uh, as a lawyer would say, the gravamen or the primary reason for this war was the Constitution, really not the Declaration. And then he goes on to say, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation. Was it a nation? Well, there's some debate about whether or not it was a nation. There were a lot of nations, uh, Native Americans, throughout what was then uh, the borders of the United States. So was this a nation? Well, uh, and then again, if I could alert you to current events in uh, the Middle East, a nation is kind of a tricky subject, isn't it? I mean, is it an ethnic group? Is it a people who have historically resided on a certain piece of land for a period of time? Or is it a bunch of people who simply want to call themselves a nation and are united by certain ideas and so on? It sounds like Lincoln, uh, Lincoln's views were in the, in the third category there. So they brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty. Well, was it? Uh, the person who wrote the Declaration owned slaves. Uh, so did many of the uh, other signers. How could that say? How could that be conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal? Well, uh, again, I would uh, point you to the slaves. But hmm. th then he goes on to what is perhaps the most relevant uh, phrase for this: uh, uh, "All men are created equal." and dedicated to the proposition uh, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness is the key term there. What mm. does that mean? Well, so let's go to our frame, our ethics frame of the three different, uh, uh, three different uh, uh, ways of analyzing an ethics, analyzing an ethics problem. Greatest good for the greatest number. Well, how about how about the slaves? Uh, of course, you could argue that the union was fighting to free the slaves, uh, but certainly at the outset, the nation was not dedicated to the proposition of the greatest good for the greatest number. And how about women? All men are created equal. Well, that's a load off my mind. But what about women? Are they mm -hmm. equal to men? Or are they superior? Or are they inferior? What are they? Okay, so let's get on with that. To life, liberty. Well, again, there's some question whether all uh, of the subjects have liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Again, as I said, that one's the key, but certainly that means that you cannot, uh, the greatest good for the greatest number that the Gettysburg Address did not memorialize, nor did it necessarily foresee or have as a key object, as the primary objective, uh, the greatest good for the greatest number, because even if they were going to free the slaves, uh, women did not get the uh, vote until 55 or 56 years later. So then let's go next to law. Law is the area where the Gettysburg Address memorializes or occurs concurrently to the most promising of the three areas, and it is often the first area where some progress is made. Because Lincoln had, I think, just recently issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which became the 13th Amendment, which freed the slaves. It should be noted for purposes of the record that it freed the slaves only in enemy territory. There were uh, four states fighting in the Union Army where slavery was still legal. But as we have uh, 
as we look through history throughout the rest of American history up until this time, law is the area where the most uh, significant uh, progress has been made. We had the 14th Amendment, uh, which uh, guaranteed the rights of the uh, uh, of the Bill of Rights to uh, people in all states. Then we had the 15th, which guaranteed the vote uh, to newly enfranchised uh, African Americans, or whatever you want to call them, newly emancipated slaves. Of course, as we know, it took a while, and we may still be in need of further progress on that score. And so that's, and then there was Brown versus the Board of Education and any number of other cases, Loving versus Virginia, any number of other cases could be cited for progress in law. And then comes uh, ethics, virtue, and that's where the pursuit of happiness comes in. When the founders talked about the pursuit of happiness, they were not talking about, as Jeffrey Rosen said in his recent book, the freedom to feel good. They were talking about the freedom to do good, do good, and to cultivate uh, the personal virtues as Aristotle uh, uh, had uh, opined of uh, temperance and prudence and uh, whatever. Uh, nor were, and they were talking about institutions that protect the right to do this and promote the effort to do this, as Aristotle's pupil Plato wrote about in the Republic. So life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, pursuit of happiness means uh, cultivation and protection of the virtues. So now we come to social media and we come to artificial intelligence. And uh, we've discussed them both, but uh Social there's a lot media. of there's a lot going on with artificial intelligence that's uh yes for sure especially <laughs> on the stock market right <laughs> there and everywhere else i mean and there's good in it as well can i give a couple of examples recent ones yes. so george george carlin great <laughs> comedian love him Seven for years you can't say or whatever <laughs> I'm, yeah radio tv did that in the, in the early 70s um just he's just sharpest guy ever uh passed right around i think 2012 somewhere around there so there were a couple of guys from a website that decided to use artificial intelligence to create a one hour special there is no video there is but it's just images of what this ai voice is doing um personally i don't think it sounds like him it's not funny and his daughter didn't think it was funny either and sent a cease and desist to these guys and has now been removed. And I believe she's also waging a lawsuit against them. So that's where artificial intelligence goes wrong. And many people agree. It just wasn't even funny. It wasn't. And it didn't even really sound like him. You know, his cadence and everything. Uh, poor, very poor example of AI and what can be done with it. On the flip side of that, Billy Joel iconic music performer has a brand new song out first one first new song since i believe it's 1997 video created and geniusly done in that they have billy now you know guy in his mid-70s and then doing the same new song and him younger doing it in the video it's amazing. It uh, it's and and I the back end I know how it was created. They found a guy that looks a little bit like Billy and who also plays piano and then they used AI to put Billy's face on this guy. Um and then it goes back to Billy later on uh today, you know, in the older Billy. Uh fantastic. Just you know, that's the stuff that's fan amazing. Um but two examples in in uh entertainment where it went wrong and it it went well. What else are you seeing, Ronald? Well, uh, along those lines, I saw a social media 
creation of Joseph Biden. Uh, now, admittedly, uh, the guy, not a social media, but an artificial intelligence uh, creation of Joseph Biden. Now, admit, admittedly, the guy did not look like one of the flying Walendas on the uh, on the tape. Uh, and he sounded sort of like Joseph Biden, but it wasn't Biden at all. It had been, you know, crafted entirely from recordings of his voice and uh pictures of him, uh, film, sh uh, film footage of him. And of course, you could do that with any uh, political figure. And that doesn't seem like a particularly appropriate way for conducting public discourse. Now, how do you regulate this sort of thing? Now, one possibility is uh, like uh, George Carlin's daughter uh, suing these people, which may provide some sort of deterrence. But if it's a public figure like Biden, then you may be getting into the issue of fair comment. I mean, after all, Biden is a candidate for office. People have a perfect right to criticize him fairly or not. Mm. And he can do the same thing to Trump if he wants to. You know, that's just it. So uh, there's those issues. And of course, social media, we've seen some coverage. I uh, don't have any specific recollection of, of anything, but all of those people who appeared in that hearing have rolled out examples of ways they're going to try to uh, try to. Uh, screen the copy that appears on there but um but where do you draw the line very difficult to enforce yeah it? that's that's it where do you draw the ethics line because if and and in the george carlin example they do say this is not him this is a recreation and they even went back and said we repeat this is not him but what happens when somebody does create something? Let's say it does look like Joe Biden. Uh, people buy into it. They're believing, uh, you know, let's go back 1930, whatever, for uh, War of the Worlds, where there was a, a, a false uh, drama created of, of chaos and invasion uh, of, of aliens, space aliens in our world, and people believed it. What's to prevent that from happening now with AI? We have I I, uh, I can see preventing some things from happening, but I can't see anything that amounts to uh, you know adequate protection. I mean, there's no law that I mean, murder's been illegal for a long time, and murders still happen. But the point is that there is at least a deterrent. There are procedures for investigating and so on and so forth. I don't know how you do that with right. AI. Uh, how do you hold those accountable? And do they, especially in the, you know, if, let's say that it's AI of a public figure, um, you can do a portrayal. Uh, I think, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, Impersonation? Yeah, Impersonation. there's an, a, another word like Saturday Night Live. They'll do a skit. They'll do Joe mm -hmm. Biden. We know it's not Joe Biden. But they took uh, a creative license to use his likeness and and create a comedy skit around him or whoever. It doesn't matter who it is. But when it comes to AI, essentially the same thing is being done, like even in your example. But what about if it's done so well that we believe it's that public figure saying those things? You know, where where does it stop? That's 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 where I'm I'm looking at. Um and what's the penalty for it? Uh, is is there one? Should there be one? You know, a lot of ethical questions being asked here. Well, uh, first of all, I think uh, one defense you would have is that uh, Joe Biden is so well known, so famous, uh, so powerful uh, that you know everybody knows yeah. Yeah. that it's imitate it's an imitation but and, do they see but which... do they and and does it i mean and it may be just a slight departure from what you usually see about joe biden 
but it is enough of a departure to put you over the edge from a favorable opinion of him to an unfavorable opinion. Right, right. And now we take it, you know, obviously Saturday Night Live, you look closely. All right, that's really, we know it's not him. Okay. But when you take it to the AI level, some people may believe that it is him. And now it's skewing, again, I'm not going political here, but it's skewing, you know, election results potentially. Um, and where's the accountability? What do you, what do, you do at that point? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that answer. I wonder. We have literally a minute left. Uh, what did we not cover here, uh, Ronald? Anything? Well, we covered what we covered. I don't know what, I mean, there's a lot more to be said, but in sure. one minute, I can't think of anything to be <laughs> The I got to tell you, the, the Gettysburg analysis, very interesting in that, you know, this document written and presented many years ago, uh, you know, our history, but when you dissect it like that, uh, leaves a lot of uh, holes to be filled in with today's society. Uh, very interesting. It really was. Well, the one last question I will leave you with is that I think uh, the new birth of freedom and government of the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth is, is my my sad feeling and the feeling of a lot of people is that Lincoln was right then as far as it went but his subscription has expired <laughs> <laughs> and it's up to us and it's going to be a big issue going forward. It's yeah. going to be perhaps the only issue. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much for today. Very many things for us to think about in terms of ethics and uh, things that uh, can shape our nation in many different ways. Appreciate you being here today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.